All right, stocks started the week. I pretty much they started the last 12 weeks, minus the Labor Day week that we didn't have on Monday. But it started the, the same way that we always start the week with a nice, in this case, a smaller update. Um, there hasn't been too many of these Mondays that have had gains below a half a percent, and today was one of them. Uh, but it wasn't like your typical risk on day. So we're going to break down kind of what uh, what drove the rally, uh, like why it wasn't typical. There was some, I mean, if you look at some relationships here, you would have thought today was actually a down day uh, in the market. So it was a pretty clear, uh, obviously it was up, uh, but we're going to talk about why, kind of what drove that. And, and uh, there were some interesting sectors that led the way higher today too that you would not have expected considering how different markets are, are relating with each other. So we'll break all that down today. Again, would suggest um, you know that we're gonna from from all of that discussion, we're gonna kind of get an idea of what we expect to see the rest of the week. Um, despite the fact that we probably still might have a little bit more strength at least early tomorrow, if not for the whole day tomorrow. Uh, but then, what do we see the rest of the week? So we're gonna break that down. Um, what the charts, especially the longer term charts, continue to tell us as we get new weekly candles at least starting. Uh, so we'll take a look at those and build on what we talked about in Friday's market outlook. Uh, and then our trade idea is a stock, another bellwether, right? We've been we've traded quite a few bellwethers here lately, of these mega cap names. We're going to take a look at another one and talk about how to trade it a little differently than how we traded the others uh, recently. So let's go ahead and get started. Today is Monday, September 25th, 2023. This is the market outlook from marketscholars.com. My name is David Settle. All right, before we get going too far, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel with this icon here or the red subscribe button down below. Click the thumbs up icon to like our video, comment on anything that stood out to you today. Join our website at marketscholars.com for free. Follow me on Twitter for more content between the videos and join our Market Outlook Facebook group that we've created. But if you're watching us here on our blog, check out some of these other things over here on the right, including our Market Outlook live video uh, that I do at 3.30 Eastern time uh, right here from this link. Uh, come down to the bottom, click this heart, it opens up this tab, uh, hit that like button there. Same thing here, click this thumbs up icon, uh, it opens up this tab, hit that like button. Again, the more you do that, it helps get our content out to all of our followers on these platforms. So we always ask, uh, it's a really big deal to us. Uh, so thank you. Uh, our goal is to get to 100 likes on Twitter. Um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in the 70s here, so let's uh, see if we can't get up to the triple digits there. Thank you uh, to those who like these day in and day out. Those who don't, you can do it right now while you're watching with one or two really easy clicks. All right, let's start off taking a look at the S&P 500 with the market forecast indicator. As you see, uh, third straight day now of dark pink shading and a red line. We're clearly in an intermediate decline right now. Uh, even with the update today, the intermediate line. In fact, we were that's how close we were to getting a cluster. We had a cluster for most of the day today, like that last little push at the end of the day, closing at the highs of the day, no less, uh, helped us kind of avoid that and, and, and helped us get our 12th straight uh, Monday to the upside. Um, so, But that's how close. I mean, we were at the 25th percentile and the 20, on the near-term line, 22nd on the momentum line. So not surprising we get a bullish day today because, I mean, shoot, the market, it couldn't have been... The short-term sentiment couldn't have been lower, um, uh, considering that it's been at extreme lows at the extremes of the extreme on uh, the last two days consecutive days. So pretty good rally up there. Intermediate line is is uh, almost in the reversal zone itself, and it's just above the 20th percentile. And then you have falling long-term market sentiment. Uh, you can see the same thing with the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, that's how close again we got to a cluster of short-term lines. The momentum line is the one that uh, got above the 20th percentile. Mar market sentiment's falling, still at bullish levels, but I mean, dark pink shading in a red line, trying to get below those August lows. Same thing on the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is the one that, uh, the Dow also had a cluster for a good chunk of the day. The NASDAQ never really did. Uh, the intermediate line's too high, but its market sentiment line's actually lower than the Dow's. Uh, again, dark pink shading in a red line for a third straight day. Finally, your Russell 2000. Um, you know, we had a six cluster today before the rally at the end, you know, it actually had rallied kind of more in the middle of the day for the Russell and then finished at the high. So avoided a six straight cluster that we did have early when we were gapping down. So kind of goes to show and its market sentiment lines actually in the lower half of the chart now. So just like that market sentiments in bearish levels. So we are, I mean, I mean, we did clear the August lows. We are pretty much pretty darn close to the um, you know, to like you know, these March lows where the, we're in this financial crisis, mini crisis, I guess you could say with the regional banks. 
pretty clear bearish trends across all of these. And, and like I said, short-term sentiment bouncing up. And it's got a little bit more room to bounce up. So don't be surprised if we don't get a little bit more upside early this week, Tuesday, uh, maybe even into Wednesday. Um, as you see, the, the long-term chart still suggests bearishness. There's a pretty bearish candle there. Uh, obviously, so far, I mean, the, day, the week's not over. It's only one day. But a pretty low, obviously lower close, almost closing below the low of last week on a Hakanyashi basis, well below the 10 week moving average. We haven't crossed below that 40 week like we have on the Russell, right? The Russell really has. Like the Russell is giving us a death cross right now. We're at third, you know, 0.3 percent to the downside. Uh, pretty clear bearish candles there. I mean, that's that is a clear break of the 200 week moving average. The last time we had that was during the banking issues, and we're not getting any banking issues. Nor are we getting the Fed able to step in right now and calm it like it did then uh, with more liquidity and, and an increase in the balance sheet. So, so that's a pretty significant uh, move. Your NASDAQ, of course, is the one that, that um, is, is the least bearish, but you can see its PPO has been falling from its peak, which was a pretty darn high peak at double digits. It's, it's been falling. It's almost cut in half now. I mean, we are clearly in at least a pullback mode, at least a pullback mode. And of course, getting below the 40 week moving average would suggest that we're more in a um, correction mode, right? As you head towards the 200 week uh, moving average. Yeah, you get below that 40 week and you're now you're not just in pullback anymore. So you're not there yet on the NASDAQ. You're, you're a little bit, you're still three, you know, you're a little bit closer to getting below that on the S&P. Um, your Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, you can see it's flirting with closing below the 40 week, um, which again, we haven't done since the banking issues. Um, and then of course your Russell is clearly below it. So, and again, the, you notice up here in 2021 that nobody got below it um, there. The Russell, um, the Russell did in late 2021. So, you know, the Russell was already flirting with it and then it bounced and everything bounced up to new highs. The Russell quite didn't quite and then it broke through. So it was a Russell that kind of gave us the sign of weakness earlier. And it's a Russell right now that's kind of telling us that we're not as bullish as we think we are. And and the last time we had this, again, the Fed stepped in and increased the balance sheet. And and it's you know, that's one of the reasons why we're so bearish is because that's unlikely this go around. Obviously, you have three red arrows across the board. Um, that hasn't changed. Uh, the MACD histogram has turned up on the S&P and the NASDAQ and the Russell. So at least you have that going for you. The Dow Jones is still red, so it's still dropping. But, you know, again, five days in a row. I mean, you're clearly in intermediate uh, decline uh, right now. Looking at the three green arrow chart itself, or breaking out the, into the two lines, uh, you can see the stochastics is clearly bearish. The, this moving average is in the reversal zone uh, now. The MACD is still below its moving average at negative levels, even with the histogram turning up slightly. We are, I mean, here's one of the reasons why we're rallying and why we probably will rally again because, I mean, we are way below that eight day moving average. Um, you can see here, let me show you how far we typically get below the eight day moving average here, exponential. Um, if you let me go out so you can see the correction to. Uh, kind of see a bull market and a correction. So here is my cursor and you can see we generally got get this low, you know, kind of at the worst of pullbacks uh, or, you know, during the during correction stages. And especially especially when you're below the 200 day moving average is when you tend to get, you know, more and more of this bearish. In fact, if you notice, if you follow my cursor along, even in March, we were below the 200 day moving average. So to be this low above the 200 day moving average is not very common. Um, and so, you know, not surprising we're going to bounce up a little bit, but obviously a bounce up here doesn't necessarily tr change the trajectory. We, we've talked about before uh, getting into that gap. That's the key to, to kind of changing the trend. And obviously we didn't do that yet, yet today. Well, there's still a good chance that we can do that. Let's look at some of the other oscillators here. We're still above 35 on the negative indicator, still well below 20 on the positive, the ADX is rising. Um, so we're not above 20 yet. So it kind of goes to show you that we really haven't even started this trend. The Ichimoku cloud is at intermediate trend strength levels. Um, that's about usually how high we get during intermediate pullbacks on these lines. The rate of change is negative, but not very negative. Uh, we are below the cloud as we get to the pink levels. Um, 
So, you know, that's that's the S&P. Remember the Russell, you know, we're a lot more, I mean, we're close to mature um, bearish trend strength, way below the cloud, way below these lines. The rate of change is easily negative. So it's a much different story. And, you know, again, if we were, if we look like this on the S&P, there would be, you know, gnashing of teeth on Wall Street there. Um, the RSI and the CCI, you can see you're still at bearish levels, well below 40, um, still, you know, negative. And in fact, when we barely finished the week below minus 100, we are clearly below minus 100 now. So this is, you know, this is correction levels on the CCI on a weekly basis. Like we are no longer in bullish mode. And, you know, during pullbacks, we don't typically get below the minus 100 during these nice little easy pullbacks. We get below zero, but we don't get below the minus 100. We only get below the minus 100 during corrections. And again, the corrections, and my definition is, when you make um, when you make a run between the uh, 50 and 200 week moving average, basically when you make a run to the 200 week moving average, we are clearly below the 17 week last week. Today hasn't changed that, and, and the MACD is negative, so we are in a we are in a, a consolidation mode on a long term basis, which again is is pretty clearly pretty clearly bearish there. And we're not MACD is not negative yet. Uh, and the stochastics is just a touch, does a titch into bearish territory, and the week's not over yet. But it kind of gives you an idea that if we are going to be in correction mode, which is an if still, I, I, I think it's likely, but if we are in correction mode, then we're just getting going. Um, the Bollinger Bands, you can see, we, we did get below the lower bands last week. We're still in the lowest quartile right now, even with the rally. We're still below the Keltner channels, even with the rally. Um, and I mentioned to you that gap there. That's when that's when we get bullish enough to change things. Getting back above 435 uh, for the Qs, which we did come close to getting into that gap, getting back up above this 360 level. So you know we're not there. Obviously, even with the rally today, we're not there. We did finish above uh, Friday's close, uh, low point, excuse me. So that's a good sign. We filled in the gap from this morning. And it still was a lower high and a lower low. And obviously we're not, you know, we're not there. Uh, so, and we, we, we got a new four week low again. So we, you know, we're still at a hundred. Uh, we're not to zero yet. So before we can even consider that we're bullish enough to reverse the trend back to the upside, we need to get the red line below 70, which means we need to stop getting new lows and, and get up into this area and let this new low tag kind of get in, over here. Then we'd feel really good about being bullish. And obviously that hasn't changed today, no matter how bullish we were. Um, again, it was a 12th Monday in a row, so it's not surprising we were up today. Uh, we talked about that on Friday's video. Uh, it was a half a percent to the upside. It was below average in the volume. We are below average on the range. So again, when, you know, when we're bearish, these first bullish days are going to be really bullish. So that's not the case today. It wasn't really bullish. So it's not a trend-changing bullish day. Um, there was no kind of runaway gap today. There was no increase in volume or range. The, the VIX is still at rel relatively elevated levels. Still not, it's still not where it needs to get to, to to finish this bearish move, but it's still at relatively elevated levels. And, and you can see the VVIX as well too. So you know, you know the VIX still hasn't rate made that seasonal push to the upside. Um, and we are still very clearly depressed in the volatility, compressed in the volatility, even with this little rally, um, there's still a ways to go to the upside. And again, we, we typically finish near the, the, uh, this move to the upside. By the end of October, we fin typically finish it near the highs of the year. But that, would get it, that would mean that we're getting up to, um, to the, the mid-20s, high-20s at least, um, you know, where we were at uh, during the March banking issues. Uh, remember that the S and P is actually kind of close to I me. Mean, it's kind of making a similar run in a lot of ways uh, to that March, but we're nowhere near making that kind of move higher in volatility. So again, there's that's still to come. And what kind of move is price going to make when volatility makes that big jump? Uh, we're going to start getting much bigger than average moves. Like, like we're just flirting with one percent here um, when you look at the ATR. I mean, we're still right at one percent. Again, intermediate declines really take you towards this one and a half percent level, which means you're going to start. You're going to get the ATR up towards like six or higher, 
And to get the average to that level, you're going to start getting big days with big volumes, and those typically aren't bullish at the start. They tend to be more bearish at the start, um, and then you start to get the bullish candles to offset them. This kind of candle doesn't come close to offsetting uh, what we've been seeing so far in the week, and nor have we seen big enough, you know, drops to the downside that would suggest that we have like washed out uh, during this phase. All right, let's take a look at what's driving the price action. Again, you can see the three-headed monster, two of those heads. Um, uh, we're working today the dollar and, and bond yields. Commodities were down today. Uh, let's take a look at just today alone here. But but those are the that's the three-headed monster lately. It's been so bearish for equities. Um, here, let's move, go out to a five-minute chart. Obviously, bonds having a huge day to the downside today, down two and a half percent. Long-term bonds. Uh, remember, this is twenty to thirty years. Um, you look at the dollar, the dollar was up today uh, pretty strongly, uh, but that didn't keep U.S. equities from being, uh, from being higher. So that's not a very typical pattern. The commodities coming down probably helped that. I mean, they were off their lows, but still they were down for the day. Uh, international equities, of course, that's not surprising that they would underperform along with gold um, with strength in the dollar. Um, but those, I mean, that continues to be the predominant story is uh, the strength in yields. Uh, moving up now to 4.54 percent tremendous move to the upside and going parabolic which is not surprising um you know it's not like um it's earth shattering news there uh the you know as parabolic as it does get uh, in terms of its positive line it doesn't get above 40 very much um, but that's a pretty strong move uh, if i were to zoom out so you can see some context uh, on this again, we did get up there uh, at the beginning of 2021, and when inflation was, and when inflation kind of took off, right? That's when it really took off there, and and the Fed should have raised rates there, and they didn't. Um, of course, hindsight's 2020, and uh, we were still we were still coming off of a big wave of COVID and excess deaths, and and so I think that was probably the main reason why they didn't. They were kind of hoping inflation was transitory, but that was a tremendous move in the cost of money there to the upside, and. And we've had also, we had some clusters here um, at the beginning of last year uh, when we started this correction. And we we're getting a cluster again here recently, uh, last week getting a cluster. So really making a move up higher to the upside. You can kind of see what the weekly uh, version of this looks like. Here's TNX on the market outlook. There's your cluster uh, that we got. Uh, not quite a cluster yet this week. And it's kind of hard because you get gaps, but um, we'll keep our eyes on that. The dollar has been strong. Look at the intermediate line getting back into the reversal zone. You know, when it got into the reversal zone over here, it stayed up there for quite a while. And then we had our run, right? We had the correction run. Uh, so here we are again, intermediate line on the weekly basis getting up into the upper reversal zone. Let's take a look at the daily chart. You can see we've been above 80 here. And we're really, I mean, we're breaking above that 38% Fibonacci level. Let me show you where that goes. Where that uh, comes from, it's uh, this rally that we had and the pullback uh, down basically to the 50% Fibonacci. We had one kind of fake out move to the downside, and then now we're back up above these recent highs from earlier this year, um, making our way back up uh, towards you know higher levels, uh, breaching resistance. And like I said, strong near term lines brought the intermediate line up there. And uh, the market sentiments hasn't even turned up yet. So, of course, with the intermediate line above 80, it makes it really easy for market sentiment eventually to get above 80 itself. Um, and so, I mean, we there's potential for a pretty decent move as you can take a look at this other weekly chart on the dollar. Um, the dollar here. Again, we're only a day into this week, so keep that in mind. But you can see how we're clearly... Um, bullish. I mean, we've been getting progressively higher closes on the Hakanyashi close every time. Uh, higher highs as well. We already got the higher high this week. The PPO is rising. It's almost to one percent. Um, it's you know we're clearly in a golden cross environment here. Um, we're not. We don't have the size of the candle. A very strong candle size yet. So we haven't really had like a big bust out move on the dollar. It's been really steady. Uh, which is partly the reason why um, that DMI is not necessarily parabolic. Um, the RSI is above 70 now, so that's a that's a rare move. Uh, again, let me zoom out so you can see that bullish trend on the dollar that we had. 
And we did get above 70 quite a bit during that bullish move. And here we are now for the third time uh, in August getting above 70. Clearly above 60. So we're clearly in bullish levels as well as the CCI is clearly in bullish levels. You know, we're above 60 now on the weekly chart. So we're clearly in a bullish trend there on a long term basis, well above a positive 100. Um, so we are, you know, we have, we're starting a bullish long term trend on the dollar again uh, after a fake out. And I've told you before that fake out, that fake outs just in general are, in this case, more bullish than if support just holds in the first place. Because, you know, you sucked in. I mean, if you go back to that week of July 10th, there was a lot of people thinking the dollar was breaking down. Um, and, you know, breaking below 100. And, I mean, we were, we were going to get back down to like 90, 89. And then we just it suckered in a lot of shorts uh, on the dollar only now to, you know, have some serious weak hands going. And, and that's why it makes it so much more bullish, uh, bearish if it's a fake out to the upside. Uh, of course, the big move that we're seeing is in, continues to be in bonds. Big breakdown in bonds. Let me zoom out to how far. Um, you know, you can see the RSI is well below 30. Uh, the CCI is diverging on a long-term chart. Uh, so, you know, we've talked about this before. At least we've I've talked about it with our market scholars that TLT is very susceptible uh, to a divergent low point. If I were to zoom out. Um, to a divergent low point, which means a slightly lower low, even though the MACD most likely won't get lower than that. So we'll have a higher low in the MACD with at least a slightly lower low. And you, we're kind of getting down, you see where my cursor is, you follow all the way to the left uh, to these low points from 2010, 2011, early 2011, right around 89, 88 in that area. Um, that's kind of what we were looking for if we did get a divergent low point. And we're in that mode. And like I said, um, the MACD is setting up for that divergence. And I also showed you too, you know, how the CCI is setting up for a major long-term divergence. Uh, the RSI is below 30 on the daily chart. Um, the CCI is below 200 on the daily chart. But obviously, we've already, you know, it's not very common for the CCI to get below minus 200. Um, and when it does, you can get some divergence here. Last divergence we really had. I was back in early 2021 where bonds rallied through most of that year um, into the end of the year before it really dropped hard uh, going into uh, this correction with the rising yields. So that's the kind of move I expect to see right now right, with this higher low point. And there's going to come a time where, you know, the, when you look at bonds, traditionally they have a, a negative correlation with stocks because if it's like a risk aversion trade versus a risk on trade. Obviously, they've had a positive correlation with them more lately than than normal. Um, let me zoom out here so you can see some context. And I'm going to change that correlation to um, a quarterly correlation so we can kind of uh, reduce the noise a little bit. You can see it's back to it was negative. You know, it was positive for this whole period as inflationary period. And then at the end, it went negative as bonds uh, dropped and stocks rallied. So yields were yields were kind of bullish there, but stocks kept going up again. But now they're back to being positive. So, you know, stocks are falling and yields uh, bonds are falling. Uh, at some point in time, that's gonna like that's not gonna last, right? Because the um, when you get into a deflationary environment here, I'm gonna go to a weekly chart and and change this to a 13 week, so we can see um, uh, the same quarter. You can see, for the most part, when you're in, when you're in deflationary environment, the um, stocks and bonds move opposite each other. So it's not common for it to be uh, as strongly positive as it is. It is common during inflationary environments. And so now the question is, how much longer is this going to last? It lasted for a pretty good chunk of time there uh, in 2021, 2022, as we were in a pretty decent inflationary environment, uh, and and suggests that we may be headed towards another inflationary environment again right now um, you know especially with uh, bonds um, you know breaking down as as low as they are um, you know at some point in time that's going to tip the scales to where uh, investors aren't I mean it's, it's a more of a risk aversion across the board um, where the you know the dollar ends up being the safety trade along with gold instead of instead of gold uh, commodities uh, make their run, the last little bit of inflation, uh, make their last run higher, 
the Fed shifts towards rate cut scenario, and that's obviously not happening anytime soon. And if you notice, the the yield um, inverted yield curve is actually rising. I mean, it's really taken off today because the two year hasn't moved. The two year didn't move today. The three month obviously is not moving either. So the Fed's not going to cut rates or raise rates anytime soon. And there and this suggests that the Fed's not really going to cut rates. Uh, they're not really on a path right now to cut rates either, uh, as the two years really kind of caught up, pretty much almost caught up to where the three month is. Uh, so that's really made this catch back up towards that 50 basis points. Uh, generally, when, when the yield curve rises, that's bearish for equities. And if we were to get back towards zero, that's really going to be bearish for equities, as that means the 10 year, you know, if the 10 year gets above 5%, uh, I, don't think, I don't think very many uh, equity models are prepared for that at all. Let's take a look at how the sectors are moving now. Uh, so let me move up the uh, sector comparison and just again look at today alone, where again you had two of the three-headed monster kind of work against us today. But but luckily, um, despite the strength in the dollar, uh, stocks were relatively bullish. Um, <clears throat> again, despite the strength in the dollar, energy materials were bullish, and that's not normal, right? They tend to do better when the dollar's falling. There's technology communication services lagging for most of the day discretionary outpacing uh, staples your three safety trades in particular um, real estate which general and it hasn't been a safety trade recently but in general uh, real estate's a safety trade utilities are very interest rate sensitive they underperform and rates rise so that's not surprising to see them lagging um, <clears throat> and then staples um, really lagging like i said bear really lagging behind what we're seeing and then of course financials and utilities is another ratio chart you can kind of get an idea of interest rates um, so when financials are outperforming utilities that's typically you know because of a positive move in interest rates there but that's your biggest kind of weird move is materials and energy doing so well relatively speaking uh, without with so, so much strength in the dollar today so not your typical risk on day I wouldn't read a lot into it. It's the 12th straight day to the upside for the markets. We probably will get a little bit more of a move up tomorrow too. But if it looks anything like this, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bank on how bullish that is. Um, because unless it's led higher by who you think it should be led higher by, then, you know, then it's probably not going to last. Uh, I wouldn't expect it to last. It's like it hasn't lasted you know, for the last couple of weeks. Uh, we're in dark pink shading and red line across the board. The only ones that aren't are energy. Uh, and utilities, but utilities, you know, that's how close we are to getting dark pink shading and the same thing really for energy too. It's flirting with it. So, you know, you do have some clusters uh, pretty much in staples today is your only cluster. Uh, and you are coming off of lows well below the moving average, but definitely not low, not the kind of reversal move today that would say, oh, hey, here we are. We're changing the trend now to the upside. It's more of your typical Monday um, and then now we'll see if these strong trends uh, continue to put pressure on equities throughout the rest of the week, uh, like we saw, pretty much like we saw last week. All right, that brings us to our trade idea of the day. Let's take a look at Microsoft. Uh, again, one of the bellwethers of the large cap index. Um, obviously has dark pink shading and a red line again uh, on the market forecast, bearish short term sentiment even today to being down a half a percent, um, you know, over 3%, over three and a third percent below uh, the moving average. Uh, the intermediate line is coming down, uh, close to coming back down below its market sentiment line. Um, you know, as it's between 20. In fact, this market sentiment line is in bearish territory. Um, you know, this is that's a much more bearish long-term sentiment than what we see on on the indexes themselves. Uh, obviously, looking at its weekly chart, I mean, this this charts are going to look very similar to the S and P. Uh, you got the crossover last week. Um, below the 10 week, it's PPO has been falling a lot more uh, than the broad market and it's got pretty sizable bearish candles right now. Not, not the size you typically get during, you know, nice little even pullbacks here like you see over here. Um, so, you know, clearly a little bit more of a bearish sentiment than normal. Obviously you have three red arrows, that wouldn't be surprising. Uh, you do have, um, you are below the 30 and 50. Filling in the gap between the 15 to 200 have been for a while now. Um, the the 8 and 17 have crossed back below the 30 as we head towards the 200. 
Now we are back into the value area. We have been above it for a while. We're now back into the value area, which again, especially with the lack of volume, is going to, there's going to be a pull towards the center of gravity, uh, which is actually way down here. But um, but that's you know when you're in the value area, that's what happens, right? You get pulled back towards um, the gravitational pull of that point of control where most of the volume has been trading. When you look at uh, some of these other oscillators, um, looking at the DMI, you can see a bearish crossover. Now we're not uh, we're not above 30 anymore on the negative. You're clearly below 20 on the positive, uh, so that's still an issue. Clearly bearish there. Uh, the RSI and the CCI have shown bearish patterns. We're easily below 40. Uh, we're you know we got almost below minus 200. So we are clearly in bearish levels. Uh, when you look at the weekly version of the CCI, remember getting below minus 100 is kind of like correction levels and we're not even near that. Remember the S&P, uh, we actually are uh, working our way in that direction. Oh, excuse me, sorry, on the weekly, let's go to weekly. On the weekly, uh, you see we are below minus 150 now this week. Actually on the market fork, uh, yeah, we are below minus 100 on, on Microsoft. I think that was the monthly chart I was looking at. Uh, looking at the uh, Ichimoku cloud here, uh, as well as some of these trend strength indicators. We, have, we Again, we haven't even started the bearish trend yet. So that's, I mean, we have negative rate of change or below the cloud. The green line is, I mean, the price is below the green and blue lines. Um, the, um, the green line, though, is still above its blue line. Uh, so you still have that kind of working against. And then you have, uh, looking at the Bollinger Bands and the Keltner Channel here. You can see we are in the lowest quartile of the bandwidth. Uh, we are below the lowest Keltner channel. Uh, this is actually the first day we've crossed below that. The, the bands have crossed outside of the Keltner channels. So you got the green dot for the first time as we're now shifting from bearish, briefly bullish momentum, excuse me, now to bearish momentum. Uh, and you can see, you know, we had some pretty bearish momentum during this expiration cycle. And, and it appears after a positive expiration cycle, we might be headed back towards another uh, bearish expiration cycle here going into uh, October expiration. So uh, with that said, I decided to take a look at a bearish trade uh, on the stock. So let's come over here to, uh, or excuse me, an iron condor spread, excuse me. You can see the bearishness on the pattern, but, but we're not really breaking down as there's some pretty decent support down in this area. Um, and so what I decided to do here is say, okay, um, let's take a look at an iron condor spread for this um, at the 20 delta. So selling the 300, selling the 322 and a half, going $5 wide on both sides gives you this uh, spread. And you can see where those break evens are. So it allows for more downside towards the 200 day, which is kind of the expectation, right? There's, there's going to be some support in that area. There's a gap down there too. If you break into that, then then we're really in bearish levels. But you see there's a shelf of volume there that will hold. So I like where that break even is. And of course, if we rally back up to new highs, then this whole bearishness is, you know, kaput. Uh, so, I mean, that's that I want to be out of it in that situation, too. So some clear entries and exits and, and a pretty good, um, you know, pretty good place to stay here going into October expiration. I don't have to worry about earnings yet, right? It'll be it'll start to pick up after, as where the earnings uh, cycle will begin after this expiration date. So let's go ahead and send that through. So first, let me position size up to my normal position, and then we will right click and hit confirm and send, and send that into uh, our market outlook category. Uh, and there's our trade for today. So thank you all very much uh, for coming on. All right, well, that wraps us up for today. You've heard from me now, and I want to hear from you. Use that link popping out in the top right corner of your screen. That takes you to our Market Outlook forum. Open up any new thread with any questions or comments you have. Reply to anybody else's thread, and let's keep this conversation going in between videos. Again, thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that thumbs up icon. Comment on the video. Join us at marketscholars.com for free. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook and like us there as well. Have a great rest of your Monday night, everybody, and we'll see you all tomorrow.